For many gamers, the questions, should I buy this book, or would my gaming group enjoy this game, cannot be answered in a vacuum. We need to know more. Will this game be supported by new products? Can I expect errata? How hard will it be to find a group to play with? Is it good for first-time gamers? This video will cover all of those questions and more, so prospective players can make an educated decision on whether or not this game is for them. If this is your first time checking out the channel, welcome! My name is Fuzzy, and this channel is 100% dedicated to the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game. I've been playing it since it came out, and I've run all sorts of games for it. I'm thrilled to be able to share the benefits of those experiences with you by covering some of the most commonly asked questions people might have before deciding to pick up the rulebook and play. Question 1. How does the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game compare to other RPGs? Well, the author of the system, Matt Forbeck, has said in interviews that he has deliberately borrowed some language and concepts from 5th edition D&D to ensure a comfort level for those who have experience in that system. It is far less crunchy than games like Pathfinder, and its design goal was to ensure that the game was easy to pick up even for folks who were Marvel fans but had never played a TTRPG before, what Matt Forbeck called the RPG-curious Marvel fan. Like many other superhero RPGs, the game allows you to play either an established hero or create a new one of your own design. The concept of leveling up your character is part of the game, but it's not a mandatory element. So, you could play a brand new character from the moment she was bitten by a radioactive axolotl to the moment she helped defeat Kang, saving the multiverse. Or, you could spend an entire campaign playing Daredevil at the same power level he's at in the comics and have an equally rewarding experience. While there are weapons and equipment in the game, it was a design choice not to make them as important as they might be in some other games, as doing so might overshadow the superpower element of the game. There are many powers your character can have in this game, enough to recreate nearly any Marvel character. The game can be played on a battle map with a grid, but positioning on a battlefield isn't super important. For example, there are no concrete flanking rules. And with powers like flight, teleportation, and super speed, Battles often can't be confined to a single map, so you're a little more likely to have a game that takes place in the theater of the mind rather than on a battle map. And that can open up a lot of creative play. So in short, the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game is a relatively light rule system compared to others, and it prioritizes fun and creativity over a tactical or simulationist approach. I have an entire How to Play series that provides an overview of the rules. I'll include that link in the description. Question 2. What's needed to play the game? Rules, dice, and a character sheet. The rules are available in a variety of formats. There's a hardcover version with some brand new and vibrant art. And digitally, you can get the rules through either Roll20 or Demiplane, both of which include other benefits including character builders that are really useful tools. One important note, the game is not currently available as a PDF due to Marvel's policy on that format. Now, if you're a new player, you don't actually need to purchase the rules to play. There are basic rules available for free on Roll20, and this will allow you to create or play a character that pulls from a limited number of power sets. But all of the actual rules mechanics are there, in full, for free, if you wanted to reference them. Now, if and when you join an online campaign, your GM, called the narrator in this game, can actually grant you access to the remainder of those rules, again, for free, including access to play any of the characters in the book and access the character creator as well. So this game is extremely easy to try before you buy. One additional benefit to purchasing the rules through Roll20 or Demiplane is that all of the errata is updated extremely quickly and seamlessly as soon as it's made available by Marvel. Physical dice and character sheets are only necessary if you play in person. And honestly, even then you could just use the online character sheets and die rollers if you had a laptop or an iPad at the table. If you prefer rolling physical dice, the game only requires three six-siders, and it's best if one of them is a separate color since there are a couple of extra rules for that one die. There are official dice available for the game, but they're by no means mandatory. I've been playing for months with whatever six-siders I've got lying around. And on marvel.com RPG, you can find blank character sheets in a fillable PDF format. Or you can use an already filled out sheet if you're playing an established hero. Question three, I'm a Marvel fan, but I've never played an RPG before. Will I enjoy the game? Well, 
The core game comes with well over a hundred Marvel characters that you can play immediately without spending any time creating one or worrying about whether it's underpowered. You can just pick up a character sheet of a hero whose personality you already know and love and play. There's no need to come up with a backstory, roll up stats, choose equipment, etc. This, combined with the rules light system, makes it an ideal experience for first time gamers. One of the design team's goals was to have the game feel like a Marvel experience. The rules are there in support of that goal. So Captain America can take a beating thanks to his ability to do this all day. Spider-Man gets a tingle when there's danger thanks to his spider sense. Colossus and Wolverine can do the fastball special and Hulk, well, Hulk can smash. So if you're a Marvel fan that has a good sense of what your character can do in the comics or in the movies, you don't really need to memorize the rules to start. You can just describe what you want to do, and the narrator can easily translate that into game actions, and you'll pick up the rules as you go along. There's not a lot of barriers to entry for this game. Question 4. I don't want to start playing a game that's no longer being supported by the publisher. How long is this game going to be around? Well, I can't predict the future, so let's stick to the facts. We know that this game is performing well out of the gate. Even though it was only on sale for the last five months of 2023, it was the seventh biggest RPG of the year, according to ICV2. Since then, several new products have been announced, including two hardcover expansions and a completely new type of book that is half comic and half adventure. Marvel has released some sneak peeks of upcoming work on their website through developer updates, including a look into alternate rules for ranking up that will be part of the forthcoming X-Men expansion. Matt Forbeck announced just in February that he's begun working on the Spider-Man expansion, and Marvel has also recently put out several actual plays in association with the Glass Cannon Network, with hints of more to come. To me, all of the signs point to this being a game that is not only being worked on, but invested in. Question 5. Are there pre-made adventures to run? There are several, actually. The Cataclysm of Kang is a full hardcover designed to either take unique characters from the minimum of rank 1 to the maximum of rank 6, or for players to run a variety of characters throughout that adventure from ranks 1 to 6. There's a free introductory adventure available online called Enter Hydra. There's also The Murder World That Time Forgot, which is a demiplane exclusive adventure, and Revenge of the Super Scroll, which is a Roll20 exclusive. There are two more adventures coming out in 2024. Deadpool roleplays the Marvel Universe, which is tied to the movie coming out and being published by Marvel, and a third-party adventure called Escape from Planet Hulk, which is part of a starter set that's set to come out in November of 2024. I have a whole video on that starter set and other accessories for the game in my News and Reviews playlist. Just one question to go, but before I get to that, if you know someone who is curious about the game who could benefit from this video, please feel free to share. And if you leave a thumbs up and a comment, that'll really help this information reach the people it needs to. I really appreciate it. Question 6. What is the community like? Will it be easy to find a game, get advice, or share ideas? The Marvel Multiverse RPG has a particularly strong, creative, and generous community. On the Facebook page, Discord, and subreddit, you'll find a lot of homebrewed items, fan-generated heroes and villains, and free adventures that are posted regularly with no signs of slowing down. Actually, it's quite the opposite. More and more people are being inspired to create for this game and share what they've come up with. I've got a whole video spotlighting just one element of the community. I'll put that link in the description. You know, it's worth pointing out that while you can find like 800 builds or so online that are, quote, fan-made, they all conform to the same rules as the characters in the core rulebook, and they're 100% legal for play. They all get a sort of peer review by the community, and often suggestions are incorporated to make the builds feel even better. The combination of a standard character creation process for the game excellent tools available in Roll20 and Demiplane, and a passionate community means that there right now are about a thousand different characters you can play between the books and the fan content, and more coming every day. And that's before the X-Men book comes out. It's pretty great. The community is also really good at just answering questions, supporting newcomers, and overall being helpful and very positive. Finally, there are many ways to look for games with openings. You can do so in both Roll20 and Demiplane if you use those systems. 
and there's a particularly active Looking for Game channel on the Discord. Shout out to community member Donna, who hosts newcomer-friendly one-shots several days a week, each with a different theme and rank requirements. You can even pop in to watch if you just want to get a feel for how the game is played before you buy the book. This tremendous service to the community is just one example of the passion that MMORPG players have for this game. Thanks, Donna. Well, true believers, that's all I've got for you today. Do you have any questions about the game that I haven't covered? Please let me know in the comments, because chances are there's somebody else out there that would benefit from hearing the answer as well. If you're a new player and would like to know more about the game, please check out my How to Play series, link in the description. Thank you as always for your support and your feedback, and hope you all have a great day.